Um, hello, everybody. Welcome back to episode 53 Talk Fame Podcast. My name is host, Kylie Montigny. I'm so excited to have on actress, model, and life coach, Thea Sakoti. Thank you so much for Thea. Hi, thank you. Um, it's pronounced Taya. I'm so oh, sorry. <laughs> so no, worries. no worries at all. It's a funky name. It's Italian. I get all the pronunciations all the time. Yeah, like I get the same exact ladies. My my last name is Montigny. It's like a, like a little like French last name. People always pronounce it Montgomery for some reason. So I that. That's so fun though. I mean, if you have a unique name, then you never meet anyone with the same name, and it's it's fun that way. Exactly. So um, you're an actress. What made you kind of want to start acting and being in this industry? Yeah, I mean, growing up, so I'm an only child, and I always had all of this energy. I never had any siblings to kind of go bother, so I was constantly bothering my parents, and my mom threw me into uh, musical theater, into a school play, and I was like, this is where I'm meant to be, like on a stage, everyone's staring at me. I loved being the center of attention at that point in life. Um, and I just couldn't get enough of it. It's been my constant throughout my entire life. Oh, love that. Like, did you ever get like stage fright when you go on stage? Or it's kind of like, oh, this is amazing that I don't get scared on stage. Every single time. Like, it doesn't matter how many times, if it's the same show, you're saying the exact same words every night. I think every time you're about to step out on that stage, you feel those butterflies in your stomach. But I also think that that just like pushes you to go like on that stage even more. And it's like, once you are out there, it all fades away because you're no longer yourself. It's no longer your own fears. You're inside the character. You're living a different life. Exactly. Like as I kind of started this podcast almost a year ago in April, I was like, how am I supposed to do this? Like I was never... I was always, like, a very self-conscious, like, person. I have, I grew up the youngest of three siblings, so I always got bullied being, like, kind of, like, bullied by the older siblings, as, yeah. as I say. But, um, and plus, like, as I kind of tried things like sports, like, acting, singing, and all of those things, I'm like, okay, this is not my thing. Like, I, I really got so mad. I was like, why, my brother and sisters got things they have for it and I don't have anything so like what the hell is wrong with me and so like once like I saw this podcast I'm like okay I fell in love with this is this something I really want to do like this is something I kind of it's like my like, first love I was like oh that's so amazing I'm glad it's hard to find your passion and your purpose in life it's it comes easy to some people but for others it's it's really that trial and error just discovering like what makes you happy what makes you feel fulfilled in life so exactly. I'm glad you found yours. <laughs> yeah, you too. So at five years old, you were cast as Oba Lupua and Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. What was that experience like for you as you play that character in such kind of like a very kind of popular kind of movie? Yeah, so I've actually done Charlie in the Chocolate Factory twice um, in my career. And the first time, that was the first production I ever performed in. I was a little kindergartner and I just took charge of the Oompa Loompas. I was like, this is my moment to shine. I was backstage like yelling at all the other like kindergartners, like get in line, you need to stand here. Like let's practice our choreography. Um, I'm pretty sure everyone thought I was gonna become a director after that. Um, <laughs> but I, I think it was just nice that they put on a production that was so well known that I, you know, e even as a five-year-old, I was like, oh, I know how to be an Oompa Loompa. This makes sense. Um, and then later in life, I got the opportunity to actually be Charlie um, in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And that completely like blew me out of the water. I was like, whoa, that's the lead. What do you mean? And so yeah. that was a super incredible experience to play like such an iconic character. And uh, he's so full of youth and just innocence. I think it's it's always nice to kind of go back to those roots of just childlike behaviors. Yeah, for sure. And for, since like Charlie and Chocolate Factory is such a very popular movie, like did you see it before you play like before you play in production or you just that comes down as well? Yes, hundred percent. My mom always had me watching movies growing up. Um, I'm sure that's somewhat where my love for film and TV comes from. Um, so I had seen Charlie and the Chocolate Factory like numerous times. We had it on like uh the 
VHS, is that what it's called? Like yeah. back back when you had those before CDs and yeah. like DVDs and yeah, all those things. It was crazy times. I'd seen it so many times. I knew every single song by heart. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Like, like every once in a while, I'd be putting on Charlie Truck Factory. It's on Netflix now. It's on Netflix. It's yeah. And so, which is amazing. Like once I found out it was on Netflix, I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch this. That's the <laughs> part of the movie. I'm like, okay, what the hell is going on? What the hell is going on this scene? Like, the whole thing is just like a fever dream, but it's yeah. uh, it's still fun. And yeah, I, I love it to this day. <laughs> Me too. So you are a part of the organization called Positive Presence Global that helps teens and young adults feel confident, supported, and significant. Through one-on-one -on -one coaching, education, empowerment, what made you want to be part of this amazing organization and help teens and young adults to make them kind of feel good about themselves? Yes, yeah, so I actually directly know the founder. Um, I was a student of Michelle Marie King. She's who um, is the founder of Positive Presence Global. And she was my mentor. And then when I had graduated high school early and I was moving out to California to further pursue my acting career, I was like, wow, okay, I'm gonna need a job to financially support myself. So I reached out to her asking like, hey, do you have any positions in your company that I might be able to fulfill? And I was guessing she'd say, yeah, you can totally come be like an assistant. I don't know, maybe send some emails, answer some calls. Um, but she had the faith in me and was like, okay, let's get you into coaching right now. And I was like, what? Like, I'm 18. I can't be a life coach. Like, what do you mean? And she was like, you are going to be a fantastic life coach for our younger students who are in middle school, like in sixth grade and elementary school, like going through all of that trouble, you're going to be the youngest coach. So you have that relatability factor. And growing up, I've always been that person that wants to help that uh, I've always gravitated towards like helping younger kids. And like, I've always wanted a little sibling. I've mm -hmm. been a tutor. I've been a babysitter. I've done so much to immerse myself in their world and support them. So I was like, wow, this came at a perfect time and I I fell in love with it. That's like my other love outside of acting is just being a mentor to, to young kids and teens and helping them feel more confident in their life and moving forward. No, oh, that's amazing. That's really the reason why I kind of started this podcast is to kind of inspire people in it, like in this studio, just kind of young little kids because like, yeah. like you know they can be anything like they, they, like in case they want to be a life coach actor a singer like they like they can see any people that are on this podcast are doing what they dream to be and they can learn and plus like i'm the youngest of three kids well four kids like with me included <laughs> and seriously like i remember when i was really young i used to beg my parents like i usually beg my mom to have another kid because like i i, hate <laughs> being I don't want to be the little one anymore <laughs> yeah and she's like kylie no i'm like okay and, and now i'm thinking about it I'm like okay that's kind of stupid but i'm um, like and plus like i have little cousins and like little kids are like family so i'm like okay i can just learn i can basically live my life through them like with uh, having a little sibling mm -hmm. it's like they're like, like if you have like cousins or like kind of like if you see any kids in general you're like okay well i kind of want this like you, I wanna, yeah it's I wanna, like i'm adopting you you're mine now <laughs> yeah you're adopting you're mine now so that's why I do. I think I was with my little cousins yesterday, and they're just like I think myself like how lucky like you are to be able Aww. to teach kids and have people uh, look up to you and everything. They get doing the best thing for it. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's how I feel about all my students. I tell them like once they become my student, I go, okay, I'm your person now. You will never get rid of me, and mm -hmm. I love you. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm saying exactly how it is. Yeah, I'm saying exactly right. <laughs> Do you have anyone that you look up to as like an actress, like coach or as like a model? Yes, I love so many people. Um, honestly, my growing up, I idolized Shirley Temple. I loved her to death. And then I also love Audrey Hepburn. She's phenomenal. Um, and then kind of like more nowadays people, I mean, 
he's been around forever. Johnny Depp is mm -hmm. fantastic. He's like, everyone knows him. I love Kristen Bell. Um, Jenna Ortega and Zendaya are thriving out there right now. I'm like, can I please just like be in your presence like once? Um, I love Lily Collins too. Like, Me too. There's so many phenomenal actors and actresses out there. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm like, one day I'll sit in a room with you. Like, yeah. we'll get there. <laughs> It'll <Yeah>. happen. <laughs> um that's that's just actors oh my goodness you asked me uh life coaches I have to say Michelle Marie King obviously uh because she was my biggest mentor and um all, all the coaches at Positive Presence Global like we have monthly trainings and we'll watch each other's coaching and every single person on that team is so inspiring and has so much knowledge that every time I like speak with one of them it like hits like my heart somewhere. I'm like, I feel so enlightened and loved. And like, I've learned so much in this conversation that I love every single person. Uh, and I guess some of those actors were also models, but like my favorite model has always been Twiggy. Um, she's kind of like OG out there, but um, yeah. Yeah. Those are some people just throw out like a billion names, but <laughs> yeah, I have like literally so many people that I look up to that my parents like, you're obsessed with everyone. Everyone. Did it, right? right. Yeah. And like the people, for people I look up, I look up to the most is like Gina Davis, Hugh Jackman, like those are yeah. the main people and like Patrick Dempsey also. Those are my main three. Those mm -hmm. people are basically my world, I'll say. Like they're yeah. inspiring me the most and during the reason why I'm starting this thing. I first Last week, I started G saw Gina my, for the first time last week in person, actually. I, oh didn't, meet, I didn't meet her or anything, but I, my parent, my mom got me a DIY ticket. <laughs> you're just looking, you're like, I see you. Yeah, I, I was in, it was in North Carolina, and I'm in Pennsylvania, so it's like seven mm -hmm. hours away from where I am. And so we drove like seven hours to here to where the thing was. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, am I in a dream right now? <laughs> and then, like, I was actually sitting in a front row. And so like, she was actually like speaking where I was sitting. She was right in front of me, like two feet ahead from me. I'm like, okay, I want to pass out. Yeah, I really want to pass out. <laughs> And so, oh like, God. I remember my mom looked at me before she came out. She's like, Kylie, don't you dare embarrass yourself or do anything. I'm like, oh, I try my best. I was just sitting there. When she came out, I'm like, I kind of wanted to pass out. Like, I, I was, like, I really like, And then I got to sing there, like, I, can, can I just give a hug? Give a hug, <laughs> Like, I was melting the floor. Like, I was never that starstruck in my life. Like, never. That's and amazing. You know, well, I, I remember I was crying after. I was like, I can't believe this. I, I thought I was in a dream. Like, I just couldn't believe it. Oh my gosh. One day she'll be on the podcast. There you go. I'm hoping. I'm praying. I can't. I said Manifest that every it. Week. I actually said that he was out every weekend. I'm like, can Gina come on, please? Like, I would do anything. <laughs> it's going to happen. I, I believe in it. We just have to, like, like I said, manifest it. All the listeners, manifest it right now. Yeah, manifest it. <laughs> Let's so, go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you're also passionate for doing voiceovers for television, animated series, and movies. What kind of made you want to turn into that side of kind of acting? Yeah, so I had never really thought through that, like, voiceover acting was a thing, like, separate. I don't know. It's like, oh, yeah, there's a cartoon and it speaks, but there's actually an actor in a booth behind that in a like speaking into a microphone um yeah. but one of my first uh like outside of stage so film and tv coaches was basically just shoved me into it she was like you have a unique voice you're gonna do voiceover here's a script we're practicing let's go and I was just kind of like okay fun um cool <laughs> and uh then I started to realize like I am able to kind of manipulate my voice like I can do lisps and I can do like oh I'm stuffy and then high and low and I didn't realize that that wasn't something everyone could do I didn't even realize that until recently in life mm -hmm. um that I have like such control over my voice and what it can do that I was like okay at least I can take this to my advantage and like make a career out of it um and I think it's it's super fun because that's where you get to be extra quirky and just completely weird because like what does a beaver sound like I don't know no one knows like we don't know so we get to just 
pull something out of the hat, create something brand new, make it your own. Um, so I think it's it's one of the most creative places you can be in acting, in my opinion, uh, especially with animation. Yeah, for sure. So um, you actually got to be part of Nickelodeon's Game Shakers. What was that kind of experience like for you to film that and be part of that? Yes, I was completely floored. I was like, when I got that call, I had just gotten out of an acting class and it was like, hey, you're going to be on set on Tuesday or whatever. And I was just like, excuse me, what? I was um, like co in complete awe. Um, it was honestly really an interesting uh, set to be on, uh, especially because at this point I still lived in Colorado. And Colorado school systems are like start at a different time than California do. Yeah. And as a young actor, you are required to be in on set school if school is like in session. Mm -hmm. And in California, school had started. So we had to be in on set school. But in Colorado, my school hadn't started yet. So I had nothing to do. Like I was required to just be in onset school and I wasn't allowed to like watch Netflix or like do anything. Like I like read a book, but it was, I was there for, I don't know, seven or eight hours for like multiple days. And I was just like reading a book and coloring when I wasn't on set filming. And I was like, this is the weirdest thing ever. Like, um, because I was like, I tried to tell them my school didn't start. They're like, doesn't matter. You're under 18 and you're on a set. You got to be at school. I was like, okay, cool. Thanks so much for valuing my education. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, the wardrobe room was, I'd never like seen such a huge room of clothes. Mm -hmm. And that was, I've always loved fashion. So that was yeah. something that was amazing to me. It was like, oh my gosh, this is so fun. I want to look at every single piece of clothing in here. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I don't know. Every little bit was so fascinating. And it's uh, multicam, so you don't just have one camera at you you have like multiple and you have to be aware to not look in any of them and you train for that in classes but the best way to learn is really just actually doing it yeah. um so yeah definitely it was one of my best experiences for sure <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely so what is some advice for younger generations that like to be like an actress or like a life coach one day um, for life coaching, I'd say, honestly, just work on yourself. I think, honestly, that goes with acting, too. Mm -hmm. I, I found a lot of sim similarities uh, within both of them, because at the end of the day, you know, you really have to figure out how to have confidence in yourself and who you're looking at in front of the mirror, mm -hmm. because no matter where you are in life, whether it is acting or modeling, or a regular job, people are constantly going to tell you that you suck, that there's people better than you, that are going to point out your flaws, and especially with social media today, um, and you need to be able to look inside yourself and point out the good stuff, pull out those amazing points that you love, um, but the, I think my biggest thing for acting that I, I really wanted to say is, yes, it's 100% doable like anything is achievable but you got to realize that if you want to be in the like film and tv industry you're going to be in it for the long haul like I've been doing this for I've had representation in LA like good representation for like eight years now have you seen me on a big screen no like yeah. <laughs> like yes there's been a lot of like kind of hurdles and I was out of state so that made everything a lot more difficult mm -hmm. um but it's a it's a journey it's a process it doesn't happen overnight so what's going to keep you going is having faith in your own talent is going to be continuing training taking initiative creating your own content and finding like supportive mentors to surround yourself with. Um, and also just embracing those little wins. Like if, even if it's just a student film where you and your friends make a short film, like taking that and being like, look, I was in something. Was it something I made? Yeah, that makes it even better because look at that. Now you have a producer, a director and an actor credit. Mm -hmm. Like 
um, just really embracing every single little thing that you do and being able to put yourself forward, like keeping that momentum, not slowing down. But if you ever need to take a break, it's like, I know I've had to take a break from acting. Like it's still going to be there. You can always turn back to it. It's not going to go anywhere. Like we are addicted to TV shows and movies. It's, yeah. it's not going anywhere, no matter what anyone says. Like yeah, exactly. I think we will always need to like at the end of the day, sit down and watch a movie, unwind, relax. Um, so yeah, just know that it's, it's going to be a journey, but if you have the faith in yourself, then it's going to be a remarkable journey with a fantastic reward at the end. At least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> that's, the, that's the same thing I tell myself. Like you always, when you feel like, especially if you're in the entertainment industry, no matter if you're in a film industry, like music, no matter what you are, you mm -hmm. always feel like, oh, you're, you're, you always kind of, I'm trying, I can't think of a word. Like you think people are better than you at what you do. Yeah, that's what I always say. Like that's what it stinks. If I mean, in, in this industry, is that like people yeah. tell you you're not as good as this actor. Like you're not, you're not gonna be big as this person. Like you're not gonna get any roles for your age, and especially, mm -hmm. and especially like being a woman. Like you, they're always kind of be mistreated for it, absolutely mistreated. And so, like that's really about about. Well, that's like the hardest part about being a woman in Hollywood is that. Like, like you, women, like men underestimate you for who you are and like people hate on you for no reason. That's kind of something I kind of have to handle on for sure. So everyone has to handle is the hate, like how we're supposed to handle all the hate like and all the no's. Like the no's and all the hate is, is what comes with being an industry. Yes, it's hard that you can receive this, but then at the end of the day, you, you shouldn't care for what other people think. It's, it's not their life, it's your life. If you want to, want to get this goal, and we work for it. Like it doesn't matter how if it might take like a week, months, years, like you're gonna you still have to work for it. Work for it. If it doesn't happen overnight, like nothing happens overnight. Like no. things happen, like yeah, no matter. So it's always like what I tell you is like just work for it. That's really the only thing mm -hmm. you do is work for it. Yes, find that inner motivation, no matter what you're doing, as long as you have a goal, just keep working towards it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So the final question for the interview is, uh, what? since we've been in a pandemic for the last like two years, how much do you think um, acting and filming changed since it all started? So my perspective on um, like this answer is going to be a little bit different, I think, because I was out of state talent until about a year ago. So um, the biggest change that happened in Hollywood was there were no longer in-person auditions. It yeah. was just self-tapes. Mm -hmm. But my, like, entire professional film and TV career, I've been doing self-tapes mm -hmm. uh, because I, I wasn't here to just go drive over to Burbank and mm -hmm. go into a casting director's studio and say hi. I had to record myself and send it yeah. in. Um, and now that's the normal. So I guess in a way I had an advantage when quarantine yeah. started because everyone was like, what? We have to record ourselves? And I was like, oh, I got this in the bag. I've been doing this for years. Yeah. Um, so in an auditioning way, for me, nothing really changed uh, in that perspective. Uh, but in like the actual filming, I think a great thing that's happened is when you have to quarantine your cast of actors, I think that's probably really creating like amazing bonds within the cast because yeah. you have to all live together in a hotel for a week before you start shooting or whatever the scenario is. I think it allows all of the actors to really get to know each other and create this outside of set um, connection. And I, I mean, I haven't like done research and been like, oh, do I feel like the characters are more connected in past pre-COVID um, films or not? But I think that there's got to be some type of underlying, uh, like, closer connection in that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I personally haven't seen a huge change, but I know that there are. Maybe I'll learn some once I start to book some more things. No, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I just think the industry has done a really good job about navigating it all. Like, we still have TV shows constantly coming out. Um, yeah. They were able to work through it all. 
Yeah, Carrie. exactly. Like it says, like every, like since like the, the pandemic started, like it, a lot of like TV shows and movies got a lot postponed due to like, oh, this is not right. like we don't know what to do. Like that's when, like when quarantine started back March of twenty twenty, no one knew idea like what was ha- like causing this. Like no, I, I didn't know what's kind of what how to treat themselves. Like, they didn't know what really what's going on. They just thought, oh, this is kind of like the flu. Like. Yeah. Um, I just want to be sure because it's kind of like a flu in some type of way but mm-hmm. then like entertainment and then like now like, things are kind of starting to open you're filming things are like dropping at, at least like every week on Netflix or in the movies like there's all these things coming out since like a lot since the pandemic kind of delayed a lot of things and so like I think the uh, industry has basically been the same besides like like kind of postponing on the things and kind of like the thing I kind of noticed that they kind of kind of more aware of like people like they're working like make sure they like get to COVID test daily or something. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, sure. oh, I guess that's the biggest change is COVID testing is expensive. Yeah, for sets like that. Uh, that's where all of the money for these films and TV shows is going is to the the like safety covid protocol people that they are required to have on set to those daily tests that they have to take like that is so so expensive and it takes away from being able to pay the editors and the uh, cinematographers and the pas and all of the other people who are also on set so i guess like financially is where the biggest changes are um, because of the new protocols. Yeah, absolutely. So I just want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It was so great to be with you. You're so sweet and amazing. Aww. I'm so happy to have you on. It was so great to be with you. Thank you so much. I'll definitely see you soon for sure. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> yes, well, um, I wish you the absolute best in getting Gina on your podcast. <laughs> I wish you of the best course. Time going with you as well. We'll definitely stay in Aww. touch. Yes, definitely. Um, have a lovely rest of your day. You too. See to you, see to you as well. Thanks so much. <laughs>